You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Thursday, the 11th of May, 2017. We see that stocks are up. Both the S&P 500 is represented by SPY and the NASDAQ 100 is represented by QQQ. We see that the 20-year Treasury bond fund is down and gold is barely down. Now let's jump right into the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. Remember, we're still in a confirmed down move on that weekly chart. We've had three weeks going on of up moves, getting close to a weekly vertical crossover, but it hasn't happened yet. We actually have a flat trajectory right now on our PPO. Well, it's heading up a little bit, and we can see the signal line is heading down. And again, derivative oscillators losing energy. That price percent oscillator is getting closer and closer to crossing over, going up. We violated the weekly trend line all the way back on the week ending the 28th. Now, of course, let's take a look at the two-day chart, see what we see. We see, of course, on the two-day chart, there was a weekly vertical crossover going up when the PPO crossed over the signal line back on the two-day chart ending on the 27th of May. And as we continue, I'm sorry, 27th of April, forgive me, we haven't gotten to the 27th of May yet, and we continue to see up movement. We do have a couple of pullbacks on that two-day candle on the 3rd of May and the two-day candle that we have the first day forming now on Wednesday the 10th. We see some pullbacks. So what, again, we are looking at is our hike in Ashi, our average pace candlestick. You don't know what a hike in Ashi candlestick is? Please go to our website, chartingwealth.com. Listen to that training. It's one of the best we have on there. We love hike in Ashi, average pace can, uh, Japanese candlesticks. I think they work a lot better, a lot easier to see trends. There aren't gaps up and gaps down. They're taken care of by the actual candlestick movement. It's calculated differently. I think you will enjoy it. You will find it much easier to read than your typical candlestick. So what are we waiting for? We're waiting to see if the two-day chart continues to go up or if it rotates over and, key and starts to go back down in line with the weekly trend line or if this weekly trend line pulls over. When we have schizophrenia between the weekly in one direction and the two-day in another, we are not trading on that chart. So we're not trading on the S&P 500 right now. What are we trading on? We're doing quite well on QQQ, up for the day 0.06%. Of course, we had on our weekly chart on the 28th of April, we had a weekly vertical crossover occur at the end of that week on that Friday. We jumped in the following Monday, and it has been beautiful ever since. As we have seen the market go from somewhere around 132 up to right at 138, that's a pretty good climb over the course of going on just three weeks, not even three weeks yet. Let's look at this two-day chart. You can see where the two-day chart crossed over enough upward energy to pull over that weekly chart the following day. The two-day chart ended on the 27th. That weekly vertical crossover happened on that Friday the 28th. Those are both in the month of April, and we've seen that market rocket up since then. We're still above the two-day trend line. We're seeing uh, not as not as strong an up movement in the derivative oscillator as we had seen, but again, we're still moving up. We'll keep our eyes on that two-day chart. We are very happy, my friends, with that trade. Back to the weekly chart. We will now go to TLT, which is, of course, our 20-year Treasury bond fund. We are seeing, again, our third week of down movement. We have a weekly chart that is still on the weekly vertical crossover, still above. And so we, we are not yet calling a down move. We cannot until we have a crossover going down. Derivative oscillator is still positive. And we simply have the PPO, the price percent oscillator, moving sideways, even though we're going on three weeks of down movement, not strong enough to kill the up movement that we originally had seen starting back on the 24th of March when that up movement started again. If we look at our two-day chart, we can see what we have going on. We have that up movement from the weekly 
crossover that happened back in early February, late January, and we had that two-day crossover going down on the two-day crossover ending on the 1st of March. And again, we have a long march down starting where the charts peaked out on the two-day chart ending on the 19th of April and then started the movement down. We still don't have a turnover rotation over on the weekly chart yet. So with that difference between the weekly and the two-day, we do not have a trade at this point on TLT. And again, like we keep saying, one of two things will happen. Down movement will be strong enough on the two-day to rotate the weekly over, or the two-day will end its down movement, start moving up again, crossover going up, and that'll be an entry point for an uptrade. My friends, we wait and see. Remember, we don't forecast, we trend follow. It is the safest, most productive, most profitable way to deal with these charts. Lastly, we're going to go to gold. Gold is in a confirmed down move on the two-day chart, but still in an up move on the weekly. Do not have a trade in gold at this point. When we look at our weekly chart, and let's go to that, we see that the weekly crossed over going up all the way back on the 27th of January. We had a beautiful run up from somewhere around, what, about 113, 114, all the way as high as 122, almost up to 123. Beautiful. Well, for the last two and a half, three weeks now, it's been a down move since that weekly chart topped at $123.07 on Friday that week ending Friday the 21st. So it happened that high, happened sometime during that week. Three weeks of down movement since then. Pay attention to this, my friends. We're getting close to a crossover going down on gold. We may have, we may have, at the end of the week, a weekly vertical crossover going down on gold. Those of you who have subscribed to our text service will get notice of that. If you haven't subscribed, you can do it for free. All you need to do is get on your cell phone and text to the number 33222. Text the word charting wealth, charting wealth. Text that to the number 33222. Again, if you've not already subscribed to our daily podcast, we send it out in the newsletter format. You will get it every single day that the market is open. There you will find instructions for how to sign up for our text service. You'll also get our How to Read a Stock Chart video, a link to that, plus the lat that we use at freestockcharts.com, plus our new trade worksheet where you can track your trades, make notes, and also the lessons that you learned from that successful or unsuccessful trade. I will tell you, you learn more from the unsuccessful trades than you do the successful ones. Typically, you learn more lessons, and of course, that trader worksheet is all about making sure that you learn the lesson and you document it. It also has a way as you go through the trade to keep notes on it, put in your reasons why you entered, why you exited. It is one of the best ways to learn. In addition to that, we also have our daily market worksheet. You fill out, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then over the weekend, the weekly market worksheet that you prepare for Monday morning. It takes you about 10 minutes a day to do this work but it will supercharge your training and make you a marketing master in record time. Now, again, it's going to take time. Ten minutes a day is all we ask. If we can do anything for you, we love to hear from you. Write us, cw at chartingwealth.com, or just go to the Charting Wealth website, and under Contact Us, we've got a little email page right there. You can send us your questions, problems, concerns. Great training at the Charting Wealth website. Thank you so much for being with us. Let us hear from you. All the best and God bless from chartingwealth.com.